Joni Young and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this pretty lady in a bonnet. Talking throughout the entire video while I'm mixing colors, demonstrating techniques, uh, showing you all the brushes, talking about the brushes I'm using and I think you're going to learn a lot from this video so hit that subscribe and let's get painting. So today we're going to start this painting on, I believe this is an 11 by 14. Um, you could also do this on 12 by 16 or whatever um, rectangle size canvas that you want. And I just painted uh, over the canvas with black and white. I made soft tones of gray. It doesn't have to be the same shade of gray all over, um, but it can be. So it's up to you. And I've also got a few colors to start off with on my palette here. I've got this light green brilliant yellow green that's this one here and then I've also got green gold by artist loft and that's this one right here and titanium white I'm going to start working on the background and I want it to look really blurry and broken up so I'm just going to do some soft circles tapping and blurring up with um, a filbert brush you can also use a stiffer um, type of mop brush as well and then we're just going to work our way towards the foreground where we're going to have this lady wearing this beautiful spring bonnet and or a summer bonnet. And I'm going to have some flowers over here off to the side. And in the background uh, for some shadows and cool tones, uh, we've got this gray already, but I think I want to just enhance it a little bit by using some light ultramarine blue. So I'm going to use this number nine silver brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet, loosen it up a little bit. And I'm going to start by taking a little bit of white, a little bit of that light green, and I'm just going to start creating little circles like this. They don't have to be perfect. This is just all this is is broken up leaves, trees, and foliage in the background. I'm even going to bring it up over the canvas here. I like it when paintings kind of spill over the edge and carry around. I think it looks really pretty when it's hung on the wall. Without a, without a frame on it, I like the edges of the canvas to be part of the painting. Not always, but sometimes I do that. Okay, I'm just gonna continue along here. Now, sometimes I'm gonna use a little bit more uh, color and stay away from the white. This way you're gonna get um, a multi-tonal effect going on. And the reason why I've got a gray underpainting is because I really like this for creating um, those mid-tones. Um, and it's just kind of a nice backdrop that will go good with every color that we add. And it's also an easy way and a quick way to cover up an old canvas if you don't have any new ones laying around and you've got an older canvas or painting that you don't like, you can just cover it up pretty quickly with black and white. I'm going to go into my green gold now. I want to be sure to make different sizes of circles so it's not all the same everywhere. You could definitely switch up the size of your brush too to do that. So I'm going to start coming in with larger blob types of shapes here. I'm not using any water on my brush because I like it when it's dry like this. I get a really soft, instant blurry effect. So when I get into this area here, it's kind of a shape that's going to be going like this. This is going to be my more of my cool tones. So I'm just going to be... Uh, adding a little bit of my light ultramarine blue there and then keeping gray.
And overlapping is good. You want that layered look. That's going to give you those um, highlights and shadows. Remember, there's leaves all over underneath some of these. We can't see them in detail, but we can see light and shadow and different color shades. I'm just traveling around with my brush, creating these little circles that you can hardly see, but it all comes together. So a filbert brush is a nice brush to use because you can push and use the whole width of it to get bigger coverage or fuller coverage, and then you can let off to make little squiggles and smaller details and shapes if you want. That might be harder to do if you're using a mop brush. Now I'm just gonna rinse my brush out just because the paint is starting to dry inside of it. And I'm gonna come in with the same colors again, but that's a good idea just to do that once in a while so that you don't ruin your brushes because the paint works its way up and gets stuck there dries, hardens, and you'll ruin your brushes. So I'm coming in with my green gold here, guys, and I'm just going to start laying in the green, dark green shadows for our big flower bush that we're going to have right here. And I'm going to come in. Oh, I just love that green gold. Makes the prettiest tone of green for paintings, especially kind of Victorian looking paintings. I'm just going to start to tap. It's going to be a little bit uh, less blurry because this is more towards the foreground, but it's still going to be out of focus. So see how I'm kind of just pushing on the side to create those blurry, loose, impressionistic leaf shapes. So you want to be changing up the direction. So you want to take your brush off the canvas, turn, tap a few times, turn. That will help it look more natural. And then back to these blurry ones here in the distance. Add a little bit more white. See more of a circle. Scumbling around with my brush. In here, we're just going to have some more details. These ones are going to stand out a little bit more. And you can use a different brush for this if you want, but you can definitely use the filbert. I'm going to flatten it and kind of cut in. Tap, tap, tap. If you can make sort of these cool looking fern types of plants. Again, not super detailed. A little bit more white this time. We can start to come in with a few little petals of whatever flowers. I want to keep them really soft 
at this point. I'm not sure if I'm going to add any color, but if I do it white or whitish first like this, then I can come in later and add hints of um, a color, maybe blue, maybe their morning glory. Maybe they'll end up being little roses. I'm not really sure yet. And then some blurrier looking ones in here as well. A little bit more of my green gold here. Again, I'm just really delicate little branches. I'll come in with my bright yellow green here. Add in a few little dabs. Bring some of this out a little bit more. I'll go into my white again. Just a little bit, bringing out some more highlights here. I really want to feel the warmth of the sun. I'm not going to use a whole lot because I'm going to be adding it for shadows uh, and color on her dress. So I don't want that to compete too much with the background. I just want to add some subtle touches in here. First, I'm going to take a bit of white with it. It's already a really pretty soft color. But I want to create some lighter, lighter shadow areas first. So I can come in. And start to add little dabs. Get rid of the excess water and paint on my brush. Dry it off. Scumble that around. Now I'll take a little bit just blue this time. Little subtle accents of this beautiful blue back here. It already looks quite pretty with this gray background, doesn't it? We've hardly done anything and it already looks pretty.
Okay, so for the figure, I'm going to start the hat first up here. And the color of the hat I'm going to make with a little bit of black, green, blue, and orange. So I'll take my black, my green, I'll place it here, a little bit of orange. And then some blue. I'm just going to take a little bit more of my black, blue, orange. I'm just going to start with a line, top of her hat that comes right there, and then it's going to come down a little bit shorter in the back. up I'm just going to loosely paint this in first so the back and the hat meets up almost with the, pad, the part of the hat that goes up higher. And right away, I know she's got a highlight here, so I just want to add that. Right there. And around. There's going to be a light little pattern here. And we're just going to do this very loosely. Just little rings like this. And then at the top, flatten my brush again. I'm going to bring this down. That was just my dog sneezing. <laughs> I'm just going to reshape this hat a little bit. See what I brought it right in there. So all I have to do is get those blurry background colors in again. Just come right up to the hat and add that in there. A little bit of white. I'm going to take more white now. really create that highlight. 
and then barely touching that pull and flick up and around the hat to that beautiful sunny glow behind her there okay and then right away her chin and we're just going to see the bridge of her nose her chin out a little bit more and then we've got our neck in here her shoulder will be here and her dress goes down her back into a V take a bit of orange and we've got my brown section over here and I'm going to start coming in with her skin color right under the hat push inside of the chin Take a bit of orange and blue for shadows on our skin. So it comes around we're going to cover up some of that. We need a little bit more white initially to do this. highlight there so I'm just going to take a little bit of my orange and white now it's almost like so it goes the highlight goes around her chin almost into a point like that up to the hat it's where the Sun is really hitting And with her beautiful puffy sleeve, this area here is going to be striped and in highlight. And I like to use this orange. Now this is a neon orange I'm using, but you don't have to use a neon. You can use any orange that you want or peach. I'm just working on highlighted areas of her dress right now. I 
and then towards the bottom we're not going to see the rest and I'm going to gradually start to switch over to my blue just want to make her sleeve a little bit brighter here first up a little bit of my green gold by accident but that's interesting though I kind of like that you can go remember you can go over it as many times as you want and then she's got a highlight over her shoulder from the other side that's a little bit lacy there we can just see the ruffles and the lace which is going to be this part here, but on this side, it's going to be in blue. On this side, we've got the beautiful light hitting down her neck, and then it slightly scoops out. Well, I'm having a lot of fun with this so far. I hope you guys are too. I don't paint a lot of uh, portraits or figures so it's kind of fun to challenge myself and and share that with you guys it's not really my forte of painting but once in a while i just want to create a little bit of light back here that's all i'm doing so i'm just softening those highlight colors blend that right into the light on the edge of the hat. Okay, washing my brush out. I'm going to take my beautiful light blue violet here. And I'm going to come in oh, right about here. And then the way the folds go, there's a bit of a a V right here. Some more shadows, some stripes, and then I'm just going to add a little touch right here coming around the back side down her back into this B where it's more in shadow and then we're going to drop down I'm just going to start doing these little dabs here guys for the lace Down the back, I'm going to add a little bit of white. As long as I've got that blue in there, it's still going to be a shadow. You don't have to, when you think shadow, stay away from thinking that it's got to be super dark because it doesn't. Cool colors for shadows. I want to create this puffy puff sleeves look right in here so I'm kind of tapping pushing using the round part of my brush to do so to create that I just got to get my canvas up a little bit ok 
get those colors in. A little bit of white with that orange again. Let's just take a little bit more white for that so it's not sort of pinky. That being said, I'm going to add a little bit of pink here soon, but I'm not ready to do that yet. She's got a little cuff right here on her sleeve. I will come in with some little pink accents after. And then her waist, her little tie right here that meets up right there with her arm. I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow. I'm gonna take, without washing my brush off, a little bit more blue and a tiny bit of black to make a dark gray color again. And then right in here, we'll bring this little shadow back. And go right under there. And you can't see the rest, but I wanna make sure that I've got those little folds in her in her dress and her mat her material. I'm gonna add a few more stripes here. If that'll show up. Nope. So I'm gonna take a little bit more white and do my stripes this way. Bring the highlights out a little bit more on her dress on this side. And then just add a little bit more of that orange at the top here. And on her face. With a dry brush, just soften. It's going to dry a little bit darker than this, and I, I want it to, right? Because we want those those shadows. So I'm going to take a little bit of green, black, the rest of my peachy orange there. Use this for some more shadow here. And then I'm gonna go like this, and then curve. Curve for her shoulder. Now under her hat here, we've got this darker shadow. So I'm gonna use a little bit more black. Okay, I'm gonna use just a little bit more it's never straight black though, because it's mixing in with the color that's on the canvas and whatever other colors in my brush. I'm 
and then just pull a little skinny vine like that. And have a little bit of shadow here from her ribbon. So I'll just add that now. And I'm running out of my light ultramarine blue. So what I'm using is, um, I've got, this is Windsor and Newton, but you can use any ultramarine blue. You can even use cobalt blue too. It'll just change it up a tiny bit, but it's pretty darn close. And what you're gonna do to make that color, is take some titanium white, mix the two up until you have the shade that you want that's pretty close to that light ultramarine blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to come around right where her shoulder starts here. This is going to be the back side of this puffy shoulder. Whoops, I brought it over a little bit too far, but I can see, I can show you guys just how if you do that, don't freak out. You can fix it quite easily. Now there's even little hints of blue in her hat. Just her hat's not blue, but there's kind of subtle tones in there. So I just want to. Start adding little dabs. And then a little bit here for the shadow that starts on her back. Around the side here. Balance that out with just a little bit of my peachy color here now. Right here, partially over the yellow. Just bringing up this highlight a little bit higher. So it changes gradually in here. I want to make sure that I get a nice outline and you can use a little liner brush if you want for this. I'm just going to use the tip, very tip of this brush and do this as carefully as I can. And I'm going to take a little bit more of that blue that I used. add those indications of those lines and stripes we'll get there and then with my white in between And also do little dabs like this if you want to give a little bit more detail to her hat 
You don't have to. Okay, so what I'm going to do first before I add the pink ribbon is I'm going to take my blue with a little bit of black and I'm going to do it in this color first. So it'll come right up here. This is going to give me a nice uh, shadow first or, or after, I mean. So we'll have little hints of this. And then it'll really make the bright pink pop out. Okay, then I'm going to take, and we're going to have a flower there too, that big flower. And then she's got a ribbon. And I just kind of like to wiggle and twist. have two, right? So we're going to start another one. Right there. And then I'm going to do just a little bit of blue first in here for some shadows before we add the petals for the flower. And that gives you an idea of how big that flower is going to be. A little shadow underneath her hat. And with barely any of that blue, I'm just going to do a little outline here. Some little shadows there. more of that pretty blue color and I'm going to bring her dress up a little bit higher right here a little bit more white get more of a little lacy pattern or ruffly pattern going on here and there Thank you. 
I hope you guys can hear my dog snoring. <laughs> she keeps me company in the studio. She's very sad if I don't bring her in here. So I'm just adjusting these lines and stripes a little bit. I've got another color that I'm incorporating right now. This is, I've hardly got any left, you can barely see it, but you guys know I like to use a uh, Holbein. This is the Neon Yellow Warm. And I'm gonna use this for the brightest highlights. I'm gonna take a little bit of titanium white, that beautiful warm yellow, and I'm gonna come right in here And then up. And up just a little bit higher. And continue over here. Just reapplying some nice, bright, sunny, warm highlights. And of course, I want that beautiful color back there. I want to feel that warmth. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that warm yellow. I want to feel the sun. And a little bit more on her face as well and right in here. a little bit more highlights so you can come in after carefully and add some more light what a difference that makes it creates such a nice glow take a little bit more of that warm yellow and white This is also really complimentary with that blue back there. Doing a very, very light layer over with this light warm yellow over the neon orange skin color mixture that we did just so that she has more of a bit of a glow there and really wherever you want to add some more light and warmth this is a really good color option. 
another nice color to make green gold neon yellow warm and white get a beautiful sunny color that way and some white I'm not going to do any detail really detailed flowers here I want to leave this just very kind of blurry and impressionistic looking. And I'm taking it around the edge because I want to continue this painting around. And then I'm going to take more of my white. Sort of create some light here that kind of just starts to blend in and camouflage with her dress. Bringing everything sort of together here. I think it's time to start working on um, the pink accents, ribbon, and flower. Uh, just before I do that, though, I'm going to take a little liner brush. I've got this little one here. I think this is uh, one inch. And I think I mentioned, if I forgot to, this is a number nine filbert, in case you guys are wondering. I'm going to outline these areas here that are going to have I'm going to just create like little almond shapes or oval shapes and I'm going to just space them out so just little lace designs I'll do a little dot in between and then one on the end there that we can't really see And then some subtle little folds. Add a little bit and then just soften with my finger. And then I'll do the same thing over here. A little bit like that. And maybe got a little bit of little strands of hair just a little suggestion I'm gonna I was going to do the pink, but I just, something's really bugging me here. I've got to do a little bit of a shadow by her nose. So I'm going to take anything kind of dark here that I can get away with. A little bit of black, white, a bit of green maybe. I don't want to have too much paint on my brush. And then right in here, whoops, the canvas just moved on me. Right in here. Barely see it. Just a little suggestion where her nose comes down.
gonna add a little bit more shadow right in there. And then just, I mean, it looks fine how it is, but I'm just noticing little things that I could add and improve on right there. Now back to my liner brush and that beautiful gold color, which is the warm yellow and white. I'm gonna outline her nose, bring it in around her edge of her mouth. So we're gonna skip the lips in there because I already have a highlight there. I'm going to come in, gradually bring in more highlight. And then back to my blue right away, blue and white. And just doing some little dabs where we've got those little lace ruffles. And then where the dress comes from the waist up, there's some folds. It's kind of turning from here. And it goes kind of over, starts to bunch up a little bit right by her, in front of her ribbon a little bit like that. And it starts from just under her arm, those little folds. And if you're not getting the depth, then just come in between them with the blue. And of course, wherever else, we're going to have some shadow. We're ready to go ahead and start adding the pink accents now and then the flower. 
So I'm going to be using my Luminous Rose. This is Neon by Holbein. And it's not my neon pink, but this is the color that I want to use. I've got a number two round brush. And I'm going to take this beautiful rose and I'm going to paint inside. You see how we have and why we did the dark underpainting first for the ribbon. It looks more realistic. I've got the shadow right below. And come in. I'm going to do this first just like this and then I'll come in with a little bit of white for where it's going to be really bright where the sun is going to be hitting. Okay, so now some white in combination with that rose. It's going to dry a little bit darker, but we're going to be left with that beautiful violet rose pinky color. And I'm going to add this where it's going to be really bright. So I'm going to do a little bit more white right here. The sun's going to be hitting it right there. Okay, now I'm going to take more white and make it really soft, more pastel and subtle. And I'm going to do these little dabs inside her dress. Tiny hint on her mouth. And I just went over the line a, bit, a little bit, so I'm going to take some of that off. Okay, so now I can start working on the flower, and I'm just going to keep it very loose, impressionistic, a little bit of white, a bit of rose. Wiggle, wiggle. As I get towards the outer edges here, I'm use a little bit more white. Just lots of little scoops, like you're painting crescent moons, but all over, or a sea. Push, twist, and turn. And then I'll just take more of my 
that rose color. And then more white where I want it to be really bright. overlap as much as you want. I've got a little bit of my blue left here. A little bit. And we've got a shadow from this ribbon down her back. Just a tiny bit like that. And some right in here. Also going to do a little shadow on her dress from the ribbon. Just a little line like that. I may need to have a little bit of pink, a little bit of a little bit more. Let's make that stand out. And then I'm going to bring that those folds in her dress I'm going to sink those back in there A little shadow right there and I think this is good painting is pretty much done. This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. See you guys next time soon in another video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Leave a comment below if you enjoyed it. Take care everybody. Bye! watching my channel.